she called me, the nurse called me and she told me on the phone that I'm ne I was negative for all the other things, but I'm positive for HIV. And that is the one time you want to hear that positive means something good, you know, not something bad. And I Alana, self-love coach and HIV stigma breaker. Welcome. Thank you for showing up and doing this with me today. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for showing up. I really do appreciate it. Um, this is the first time I'm interviewing someone within the HIV community. I have so many friends within the HIV community, and I don't even know why this is my first time interviewing somebody besides CC Coven. Besides CC Coven, she's someone who speaks about HIV and herpes. Yeah, so I kind of interviewed from a both point of view, but this is the yeah, first time yeah. I'm interviewing someone who's full on speaking about HIV, breaking the stigma, wow. and also coaching in this space. So yeah, please break that stigma. <laughs> what what you started? What made you want to talk publicly and help other people living with HIV? Anger. It's called indignation. It's called anger. It, it's called righteous indignation. Okay. That's what made me do it. Um, I was looking around and I was just looking at the fact that there are women who are HIV positive and then they're just hiding, living with HIV positive. And I, 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 I just thought this just doesn't sit well with me. It didn't sit well with me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think with me, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a lot re re rebellious. I was going to say a little bit, I'm a lot rebellious. So <laughs> it's a case of if I feel like something is wrong, then I'm going to try my best to sort of allay my fears yeah. and to get the courage to do the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So explain that. Were you afraid to do this publicly? I know you talk about anger push you to it and pushing the yeah. thing aside. Explain that process. How did that come about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was afraid because you know it's HIV, right? Um and before I even posted my first video, I think you know when something is right for you, when you you start getting these sort of whispers in your head and start to get, getting this sort of gnawing kind of do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta yeah. do it. Sort of feeling and thoughts and well, urges. It's more like urges. And that is your gut telling you you've got to do this thing. So before I did it, I actually um called my my younger sister. She's my 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 ride or die. <laughs> Called my little sister, had a, a, a long chat with her. And then I told her that I was going to go and make a video and post it on post it online. And she told me, go for it. Um, it's just that reassurance, right? That yeah. support tapping into your support system. And I when I had the conversation, I felt so much better about doing it. And then I did, right? And then I posted it and then I ran and I hide. <laughs> What do you mean you ran and hid? Like, I was like, boop, chuck my phone. No. <laughs> I usually do that when I'm sending a risque text message. I really? <laughs> now, I think that's a subconscious dissociation. We're like, not me. <laughs> not I. <laughs> check it. Doing such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so well, what's your story like how did you find out how did you feel when you found out like what's your story from finding out all the way up to talking to your sister saying i'm gonna make this video public and then going yeah. going to hiding let's talk about it um how i found out was purely by accident coincidence serendipity <laughs> because um my friend my really good friend at the time she was having some issues and she wanted to go and get checked out and so she asked me to come with her and I said sure I'll come obviously naturally and so we went along and while we were there she asked me if I wanted to get tested and I was like no I don't need to mm. I just I'm sleeping with my guy you know 
um, I don't need to, and and, and all of the, all of the I, I don't need tos. But then the nurse come, a nurse came around, and she asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said no. Like I refused. I refused getting tested their their requests so many times, right? Until it was closer to the end of my my friend's um, appointment, and um, then I decided, you know what? Since I'm here, I might as well do it and get it over and done with. And and I wasn't expecting anything, so it just took me um, by totally by surprise. And two weeks later, so I, I sort of lived my life in ignorance for those two weeks. And then two weeks later, she called me, the nurse called me and she told me on the phone that I'm ne I was negative for all the other things, but I'm positive for HIV. And that is the one time you want to hear that positive means something good, you know, not something bad. And I, I was absolutely floored, you know. I, I, I really had, and I'm sure you experienced this too. When you 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 hear the news, it's it feels as though you have an out of body experience where you just you 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 dissociate immediately. I don't know if you experienced that. My experience was a little bit different because I found out the same day I found out I was pregnant with my son, oh. and I was in the United States military at the time. A white man, black woman in a white man's army, pregnant by somebody higher ranking that I wasn't supposed to be sleeping with. The stick uh, being pregnant kind of yeah. hit me 10 times more than yeah. my diagnosis did. Um, yeah. my The stigma of herpes didn't really sit, sit for me when I was ready to go back out and date again. But I had to spend some time being pregnant, becoming a mother, and just dealing with that part that it was easy for me yeah. to just overlook my herpes i was still stigmatized still feeling away still mm. upset but my pregnancy just took over uh, wow yeah. so it became the um the diversion in a sense to the the issue mine i didn't have i didn't have a diversion i just had the diagnosis and being told and that that is what it was mm -hmm. right um but I, I, I wholeheartedly felt as though I, I dissociated. I had an out of body experience, and I, I sort of felt like I had an emotional um, death. You know, it really felt like that. And um, the same day, as I was on the phone, the nurse asked me if I wanted to, if I could come in. And the thing about it is, I just happened to be in the the right place at the right time this is what what i meant about the serendipity um because i happened to be at my friend's place again when i received the call and then i was able to just go to the clinic straight away that you know that same day i found out and that is when i went in and i spoke to the doctor and he just he just all he said was you know you're hiv positive he was really calm he was really stoic you know he's used to this right yeah and and so he assured me that i didn't have anything to worry about essentially because um you know when i start medication i'll be i'll be fine you know it it, it is like a manageable um disease like diabetes that that is what he explained it as you know it's as manageable as, as diabetes and i was like oh is it that's not what i heard you know yeah, um, but I didn't hear anything because I didn't know I was leading with the stigma, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but it's really the uh, again, it's like me live with me living with HIV now, it's not even the HIV, it is the stigma, right? That I know now really impacts people because when I first found out I was a HIV positive, I had so many of these um ill informed, internalized information and i had internalized the, the stigma right and for a long time because when i when i got diagnosed i got offered um mental health help and i didn't take it because I, I didn't feel comfortable talking about it i didn't feel comfortable going to the clinic to talk about hiv or even going to the clinic i remember the days when i first found out like i would miss appointments and things because I didn't want to go to the clinic, you know, this is my new reality. And I didn't want that to be my new reality. Yeah. I would 
miss appointments, I would um, I would hide. I'd hide to go into the clinic because the thing is, you know, you 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 become so paranoid and you think someone's going to somehow read your mind and to know what you're there for, which is not the truth. It's the paranoia and it's the fear, right? Yeah. I said I would hide. I would hide to go in, walking into to the clinic, and it was it was really horrible. And I remember all of that. And I just, when I think about it now, I just think I don't want other people to feel like that, knowing that they're thinking that for the rest of their life, yeah, I'm going to be they'll be taking a pill, but it's for HIV. I don't want that. You know, I I don't I do not wish to frame um, being HIV positive in the light of oh, I'm frail. No, I'm not. You know, I don't want to frame it in the light of, oh, no, the HIV is doing this to me and the HIV, this, it's not doing anything to me. I'm taking my pill and I'm just living my life. That is literally it. Yeah. You know, I feel like anyone who finds out they have an STD that they can't get rid of kind of go mm. through the motions. Um. I didn't have your experience, but I know one fear that I did have was, oh my gosh, am I going to give this to my son? Right. Mm. Because of our ignorance and our lack of knowledge when it comes to these STDs, you yeah. automatically shame yourself. You automatically take on these ideas of your, your ignorance and your lack of knowledge and knowing, and you beat yourself up with this information that is just not true. Because you haven't you do. researched and you don't know anything about it yet. So a lot of the shame that we experience, the stigma that we experience is it's really us, you know, the it's belief us. in Mara. It's it's us yeah. it to ourselves. And yeah. that's something that I always take the people within my community through, just the the observation of self. How are you showing mm. up? How do you speak yeah. to yourself, right? Because yeah. nothing really changes when we get that diagnosis, but our knowing, that's it. That is the difference. That's the only thing. Um, that's, <laughs> it's with knowing any sort of um, news like, like that or any sort of news that you didn't have moments before would floor you if it's big, right? It's just yeah. um, natural for us. So I think I, I started looking at the HIV stigma through the lens of any stigma or any discrimination or any sort of um, discomfort you'd feel about yourself. Um, I, I started looking at myself through the lens of my traumas and how those may have impacted the way I felt about myself being HIV positive. Because the thing is, I've realized you think it might be one thing, mm -hmm. but mentally, subconsciously, one thing triggers another thing, triggers another thing, and you 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 then learn that you have something called a mental schema, which is um, sort of like a, a a mapping of a memory you may have had or an experience you may have had when you were a child that was terrible, and then you you lodge that memory into your head, and then you keep that memory with you, and then everything else that happens to you moving forward is a reflection of the thing that happened during the childhood. So mine was low self, the things that happened to me surrounded low self-esteem, not uh, abandonment issues, like all of the core trauma things yeah. that affects a person, right? Mm -hmm. And I realized it wasn't just, for me, it wasn't just the HIV. This is why I, I say like the HIV diagnosis, like that, that in, for me, I think the reason I'm really able to sort of talk about it and things is for me, it is, it is, not the the a priority on my list of worries of yeah. things that has happened to me you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i've experienced worse like i have um so i can't run around pretending like hiv is the worst thing that's happened to me because it is not right so i had to put those things in order mentally and um also in getting therapy seeking therapy for my mental health and my trauma and things like that I was then able to integrate being HIV positive and realizing that it doesn't mean shit. that part well shout out to you for being able to do that um yeah it it, it, it takes a lot of work discipline it does. accountability awareness yeah. 
acknowledgement yep. <laughs> to, to go on that journey with self. I'm always saying that my herpes diagnosis led me to the unhealed portions of myself. Um, I wasn't depressed because of herpes. That was just a cherry on top. My depression came long before herpes even got here. And my insecurities <laughs> were here long before my herpes even got here. It just made it a little bit more difficult for me to hide behind yeah. superficial, right? Yeah. Like before my herpes diagnosis, it was easy for me to hide because, oh, I got this pretty face. I got a nice body. I'm educated. Yeah. I have a yeah. nice career. Society yeah. says I can be confident. And then I get something like herpes and I still have all of these things going for me, but my confidence is gone because mm. it's been false. The whole yeah. Time. Yeah. yeah. And I've been equating my work to what I have to offer in between my legs. And that's something I needed to, to acknowledge and so want to <laughs> go on a journey outside of that. Oh, so true. Because I've realized now my relationship, you know, I swear, being, being HIV positive really smartened me up. <laughs> <laughs> because it took me out of the game of dating and all of that so that I was able to sort of really look at look at sex sort of under the way um the way the people who date dating has sort of become this thing where um it's almost emotionally transactional and when it's devoid of any emotion and connection I now feel I I genuinely have no interest in in it right and I wasn't able to do that before. Like, I remember when I was younger, but then I know it stems from being, you know, sexually abused as a child. Like, my relationship to men wasn't that of, oh, he's a kin. It's more like, I don't really like men. Ooh, um, I kind of do. Oh, I'll sleep with you. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, whosoever I was, I was, I was with. And but there was no real connection and then I, when I was tossed out of the dating pool when I first found out my, about my diagnosis I um I really had to sit back because I was not a choice for anyone anymore do you know what I mean that's the thing you 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 realize when you you're HIV positive because of the stigma and stuff you realize that you 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 are not anyone's choice anymore because nobody wants to get the big bad HIV. And that is something that you could give them. Um, but I, I would say I'm so happy with things now. Because even, even before you equals you, um, I'd, I'd tell guys when I was really comfortable with them, I would tell them, you know, this is, this is, this is what's going on. Um, but I'd be, of course, selective with whosoever. And I, I really shied away from sex um, also. But moving forward now in light of, you know, medication and not being able to transmit the virus to anyone, like that has been a game changer for me, but for everyone who is HIV positive, you know? Yeah. Because I remember when I, when I, when I read the news and I, I watched videos on, on you equals you and being undetectable and what that meant, I cried I cried and I still didn't, I think even when, even when I read it, I'm a, I am a, an avid researcher. And even when I researched it and read it, I'd intellectualized it, but I hadn't emotionally um, integrated it. Um, and so even though I found out it would took months later and even a, maybe a, to a year and a half for me to really internalize what that meant, that I was not a carrier of a, um of hiv who would then transmit it to somebody um and then possibly end their lives as they know it you know and their lives as they know it it feels like there's so much stigma in just that statement alone or saying that it took you out of the dating pool or you wasn't anyone's choice anymore because one thing that I preach to our community is that there is a possibility someone can view the risk of losing you and the value you bring to their life way higher mm -hmm. than the possibility of getting mm -hmm. the virus from you. Um, mm -hmm. Herpes is a little bit different because we don't have any pill that tells us that we're undetectable and we can't pass the virus. Yeah. But also 
sleeping with a, someone who has herpes is not going to guarantee that you get herpes from them. Neither. Mm. It's kind of mm. a possibility game, right? It's kind of how much does this person know about their virus? What what are they doing to prevent the transmission of the virus? Um, it, it, it's a it's a different ball game from someone who knows absolutely nothing about herpes to someone who knows mm. absolutely a whole bunch of things about herpes. So one thing I'm constantly well, it, it, teaching it, it, is you are valuable. You are mm-hmm. still a catch and you are still worthy of love no matter of your diagnosis. And, and again, someone may find the risk of losing you a lot higher and a lot grander than possibly getting herpes from you. So from your yeah, view, um, from being at a standpoint where there wasn't medication to there is medication has that helped you with your acceptance? Do you think you would have gotten um, this far if there wasn't medication? I think, I think so. I just think it would have taken me a longer time. I would have, I would have, I think me knowing me, I would have gone into, okay, well, this is, this is what I am. So I don't give a f- It would have taken me longer, but I would have gone there knowing me, knowing me. Okay. Um, yeah. Knowing myself, but with, it being undetectable now it's like i feel like people need to know this information not just for people who are hiv positive but the thing is it's not just for p- positive people is the people who don't know they're positive um who are afraid of getting um tested because of the stigma right so and the the medication itself or or being untransmittable acts as a preventative measure also so there is also that and i think it's important to spread the news about that because this should be something you should be seeing in the news and hearing about being sheltered from the rooftops you know yeah but it isn't so Um, it's not just for hiv positive people and saving our lives it's saving everyone else's lives it's something that is um has really sort of transformed HIV because we can get rid of um, this. We can we can actually reduce drastically and get rid of is the aim to get rid of any new transmission cases by 2030. And that's because of the way the medication works and the suppression and being undetectable. So I just think that is just amazing. And you know? that's if people are doing what they need to do. And, and that's it. Yeah, this is the thing. I think uh, the thing about the way I see it is, but then I could be just, just be speaking for myself. I think people are inherently um, selfish in the sense of um, self preservation, is, you know, is, is not even, um, I can't say important. It is just on nature, right? So you take your medication because it's your nature to do so, because of self preservation, you know? Um, but there are some honey who will not. There's some people who forget. There's some people who are fearful of getting tested, period. There's some people yeah. who only get tested when symptoms present themselves. There's some addicts out there who probably won't remember. I'm just speaking from my experience and and my upbringing and what I've seen and what I've been surrounded by. Um, I just think altogether, the goal should just be having the, making the conversation less taboo and stop. This is the thing. Like, you know, stop. Let's just stop engaging in intercourse without having that conversation, without requiring what we need to require from one another. Stop having unprotected sex just because you trust the vibe. Oh, I trust the vibe. Oh, I love them. They ain't ever going to hurt me. You're Mm -hmm, literally putting mm -hmm. the whole responsibility off your sexual health on someone who is not even responsible for theirs because they're not even asking you those same questions, right? Exactly. Yeah. just the expectation of somebody telling you that they have something they may not even know if they have anything this is the thing they tell you right this is the thing yeah with with my ex um he he cheated obviously right and um and i i i would have never thought of using protection with him 
you know, so this is why part of my message is also use protection in relationships and and I think people people try to be pedantic about it when they're talking to an HIV positive person, and they they say, well, you know, you should have used condoms. Okay, well, if and you and you should have practiced safe sex. Well, and I say I say if 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 we all were to practice safe sex, we would all use condoms in a relationship. And if we wanted to have just raw intercourse with each, with each other we will plan that if we're actually being pedantic about it you know we plan that okay we're gonna have it once a month and we're gonna have it once a month unprotected and mm -hmm. we're gonna get tested before we do it and afterwards you know what i mean but even planning it planning for raw intercation no you gotta plan for protective sex too because condoms yeah. don't protect you from all stds yeah that's it Condoms is not always going to protect you from herpes. Condoms is not always yeah. going to protect you from syphilis. Condoms are not always going to protect you from HPV. These are skin to skin contact STDs that we're talking yeah. about. Depending on yeah. where they show up on your skin, the con mm -hmm. if the con condom's not creating a barrier, it's not going to protect you. So even yeah. conversation of planning when to have even protected sex. This sex is, the is thing. not taboo, but safe sex is taboo. Listen. <laughs> people are really serious about it like they they say they are to people like us then they would realize that it actually takes planning and work okay that means knowing your own status and really being dil diligent about that every time you want to have some sort of intercourse yeah taking it serious if you don't want to i i i read yeah. a video about a woman who didn't tell her husband that she has husband that she has herpes and it's eating away at her. Mm. And people in the comment was talking, you know, really talking about how she's wrong and she should have told him and why she kept it from him. And yes, we all know she, she, she should have told her husband, if you're going to step into a marriage and start a relationship, it should be built off of trust. You shouldn't be keeping something like that from your husband. Now beating her up is not going to protect anyone outside of that situation what's going yeah. to help anyone outside of that situation is paying attention to the husband and not paying attention mm -hmm. to the wife that kept it secret. Mm -hmm. well how could a yeah. husband showed up differently to prevent him yeah. from being that situation maybe having the necessary conversation we should all be having before intercourse maybe requiring to see std results before engaging in sex or before even marrying this woman if the husband could have done that for himself, he could have avoided a dishonest woman. Yeah, um, I think that is so true. It's about taking responsibility for all of our ourselves, our yeah. actions, being accountable for that. Because then when we know the other person is positive, they already know their status. Or they've, if they already know what they have, they already know. But then... If you're the type of person who hasn't had a, a, a test in, in God knows when and you've been actively having sex, um, but yet you have these ideas of purity for yourself, that is just delusional. Yeah, okay. It is. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one with the information and you don't know. Shit, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> whenever I get comments like that, it makes me laugh because I'm thinking, I know you, you. Yeah, I haven't had a test in a long time. So, yeah, I, I I've also said that they they say people with lifelong STDs need to be telling people up front, and I'm like, if you are expecting someone to deliver their medical history on the first date, you better have your full panel STD results with a recent yeah. test result date yeah. on top of the paper yeah. ready yeah. to deliver. You better know what you got going on too if you are expecting someone living with an STD to talk about that on the first date. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. So. And they don't. <laughs> they don't even know what they got going on. They don't even know. I think, I think some people just just um they, they like a bit of drama, a bit of mm -hmm. spice. They, the the judgmental behavior is what they live by, you know. Yeah. That's the yeah. that's one of the first things women worry about. Oh my gosh, someone's gonna think I'm a hoe. This is the thing. Right? I'm like, I know people who are promiscuous that are sexually responsible mm. 
no. I will trust having sex with them. Yeah. The lady who has only two bodies, who has never yeah. seen a full panel and seen yeah. before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> because people equate um, the amount of bodies to um, the, the, you know, the level of risk. I mean, yeah, fair Responsible enough. But then there's, there's responsible sex to think about. There's <laughs> being responsible for yourself. And I think if we were all being more responsible for ourselves, then we we really would be really in this 2024 moving forward <laughs> because we can do that because we have the internet. Yeah. Because we all literally have the internet in our hands every day. Every this is why it surprises me when when I get certain comments and people say certain things. I'm like, you literally have the internet in your hands, you know? Like 50 years ago, however long the internet has been a thing in our hands, <laughs> you know, through our phones. Yeah, fair enough. They could be ignorant, but you no 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 no. I <laughs> So let me shift a little bit. How has your mm. dating life changed since being public about your diagnosis? Okay. Um, actually, I it now I think it's just because I feel more confident and I know what I want and I know me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I care less about the other person in regard to what they want. So I'll just say, hey, I'm positive. Um if that's something you can deal with or not deal with, but you know, if it's something that you can wrap your head up around or, you know, or you're willing to learn information about, um, yeah, let's go. Because that's what I'm looking in for in a partner. I'm looking for somebody who is curious and non-judgmental in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just him being a, a human being. I, I want uh, uh, to be with a human being who is curious, who's empathetic, who is non judgmental. So, those are the qualities I'm looking for. And if a person isn't that, then I'm we don't have anything further to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not interested in, I'm actually just not interested in, in casual sex with anyone. So, then that's off the market anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm looking now, I'm open. I'm actually now open to committing. I haven't always been that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but now I'm open to committing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leading with honesty. You know, I'm going I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going to tell the, the guy, oh, I'm HIV positive on the first date or the second date. You know, um, when it reached that point and there's enough, I won't say trust because I won't let it go too far down. But yeah. Um, if I feel like there's something going on between us and we feel there's something going on between us, I'll say, you know, um, uh, depends on my, I'll say, honestly, it depends on my mood <laughs> because if my mood is, I just want to get this out of the way and see what you're like. That's what I'll do. Okay. So it depends on my mood. Okay. And our last question, mm -hmm. if you could go back to the younger version of yourself that just found out they had HIV. Now, you know, sometimes we don't even want to hear, it's going to be okay, you're going to be all right. What would you say to that version of yourself that she would actually receive and not brush off? That's a good point. Because she was messed up in the head, <laughs> emotionally and everything. So what would I have said you know, I think in, in a lot of ways, I'm really simple because I just want confirmation. So it's literally two, three words. You're going to be OK. <laughs> okay. And give me a hug. <laughs> I will take that. See, my youngest self wasn't hearing that. Get out of here. <laughs> well, if it's coming from if it's if, it, if, it, if I'm, I'm projecting and I'm thinking about my old my older self <laughs> telling me that right, they've already had the experiences right, they've lived through it, so they know I'll be okay. <laughs> I understand, even if it was for me, <laughs> younger self was that. <laughs> what? Younger self was that. Uh -uh, I know this lady. <laughs> I don't know her. Uh, you say you me, but. Um... <laughs> I do not. 
I do not accept it. I can't receive. <laughs> she wasn't gonna take that. And a hug, she definitely was not. <laughs> I know, I'm not get her. <laughs> nah, uh, I want hugs for my my future self all the time, man. Because I'm like, <laughs> okay, we we've done it, we've made it, like we have made it, okay. Because <laughs> I I can't sit here and um, but this is unrelated to BHV, it's just just mental health in general. I can't just sit here and, and say I don't have days where I'm just like, you know, um, I'm no, not no. gonna make it. I don't feel good, and I just don't see the future how that will will unfold. <laughs> Um, but I have, I also have a truth that there is a future me that is doing well, that is happy. Yeah. And that is just how, how it is and is going to be compared. Uh, Cause I, I sort of compare how I am now to what I was like when I was younger mm-hmm. and I'm so much better now. So I think my projection into the future means that I'll be so much um, happier. Than Always. With it myself. should be. You should yeah. have that vision for yourself so that you can step into it. Yeah. Um, I know now I've changed my whole entire relationship with my younger self. So I think about my future self. If she would have come up now, me hearing it would be okay and getting a hug from her will be absolutely okay with this. Yeah. Of yeah. Myself. But yeah. the version of myself who found out was a very depressed version of myself. Yeah. Um, someone who was, I didn't know myself. I didn't love myself. Um, I lived a life for the validation of everyone else outside of me. Um, I very much was for what society deemed was good and wasn't for what society deemed was bad. So if this version of myself, this peace, love, my, my younger self, get your little peace, love, spirit, whatever, energy, whatever self or out my face that my youngest she would tear a hold i wouldn't even go visit her look (laughs) (laughs) but this this, it really this goes to show that we are we become sort of um strangers to the different versions of ourselves right Mm -hmm. because your younger self would not have have would have been looking at you like you were a crazy old lady now (laughs) you know (laughs) What I would have told my younger self is you've been through so much. You've been through abuse. You've been through molestation. You've been through death. I would just listed everything she's been through and reminded her that you, you still, you're, you're still okay. You, you, yeah. made out, you made it out. Okay. Yeah. And, and this is just something else that you'll be able to handle. Yeah. Yourself will receive that. Yeah, that is that is such a so true because I, when I think about it, like my mindset, and that was of course due to my experiences. My mindset was that nothing good happens to me. Like my mental distortion uh, was, was that nothing good happens to me, and just 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 all the worst things always happen to me. So yeah. now I don't think like that anymore. And you could have, I I, I would have never guessed that I wouldn't have thought that. And I would have never guessed that I would actually be talking publicly publicly about being HIV positive because I too was so I was so um, depressed and concerned about what other people thought. Yeah. And and uh, the thing about me is I have I always I'm always in two, three, four, five minds. Okay. <laughs> so I have one mind where I just don't care. And then I have one mind where I do care. Do you know what I mean? And then I'm somewhere in between um, yeah. back there. I'd say I was more so in the mind of one minute. I'm like, fuck it. Mm-hmm. Next minute. I'm like, you know, you can do this. Then you can't do this sort of thing. Um, but I think as I've gotten older now, I just, I just, just seeing, just acknowledging the proof that I have changed yeah. shows me that it is always happening. Just being aware of the fact that changes, good changes are happening yeah. makes me know that the, in the future is going to be more like I would want it to be, you know? Yeah. Perspective, man. A matter of perspective, whether you're about to be happy about the situation or you're going to be angry. Girl, I decided I'm going to be happy. (laughs) 
be happy. <laughs> I'm going to speak good things over my life. I'm going to wish the things. Everything great is always happening to me. <laughs> Abundance is pouring in. Prosperity is pouring in. <laughs> <laughs> Let me swing my hand. Preach that girl. Say that. <laughs> Man, I catch myself random times of the day just being <laughs> grateful and practicing gratitude and just saying thank you and reminding myself of all the things that I have to be ha- grateful for yeah. and happy about. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that mindset of just it's a mindset, even searching for all the worst things. And I used to yeah. be that person to think yep. about all the worst things go oh my gosh I gotta do this and I gotta do that I gotta do this yeah. no I get to do this and I get to do that and I get yeah. to yeah yeah and it's amazing how saying I get to do it um just changes how you feel in the moment yeah. um and you know it, it's like having our, our hands on our limbs and everything we don't we don't think about we don't think about it because it's it's been there it's attached but if something happened you know you um broke a leg and you, maybe you had to have that leg amputated then it will become the fo- the focus of your life you know moving forward and then you have to move forward from that so i look at it as there's so many things that has happened and there's so many things that can happen i'm just preparing myself myself for to deal with it you know, whatever it is. But the aim is happiness. Joy. And I, I know I now know what that looks like for me. And I now feel I think another thing is feeling it, feeling that in your body. And if you've been through a lot of trauma, you 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 would be able to feel that because your experiences that bad things happen to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then you're always sort of in in you're in fear mode also, so you're expecting bad things to happen to you. And you're so attracting bad things. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you're on the yeah. same energy as the yeah, bad things. yeah. You're creating them, and you don't even know that you're creating them because yeah. your subconscious wants to prove you right every single time. Yeah, yeah. his yeah. mind is always wanting. Oh, that's the uh, unconscious mind does not reason. If you consciously believe something, your unconscious mind is going to deliver, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It'll show you. <laughs> that, that's why I don't play with when I when I, when I um, receive sort of messages from myself. I'm like, okay, we 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 are listening to that, you know. Like I, I think I had never understood what intuition was. You know, like when you hear people talk about intuition, oh, trust your intuition. I didn't, I didn't have that, actually. I, I expected, I think the way I internalized it was, I expected to hear this voice that would tell me to do something, right? <laughs> but um, I don't think it works like that. I think it's more of a, I know now it's more of a feeling. It's like your, um, your trauma response. So say something happens and say you're walking down the street and then somebody runs up behind you and um you know they i want to say attack you but they just grab you or something and Mm -hmm. your reaction would be to either run just to fight or just to to fawn and just stay there right Mm -hmm. yeah i'll freeze and for a very long time i was in fawn freeze mode and so my my go-to was just to flop down and to just take the thing after so long because i just expected well in the future the the next thing is going to happen anyway the next worst thing is going to happen anyway right mm-hmm. so i i i i was never a person who was optimistic that takes skill it's a skill that you learn and then you put into practice yep. every day yes every day you have to you have to practice it every day in order for it to become a habit. If you don't every practice day. it, it won't become a habit. I sh- go back and forth with my clients with this because I'm like, if I'm telling you to do something daily, even if it's a pain, even if the meditation and the practicing the gratitude and setting intentions is a pain for you right now, you have to get through it. Everything yeah. is a pain before it's a habit. It's like smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette is disgusting the first two weeks. And for some reason, people go through that disgusting taste and that disgusting this until it becomes a habit. 
You are programming well, your mind to like it. Same thing with alcohol. Alcohol is disgusting. It don't taste good the first time you try it. It don't taste good the second time you try it. But you are still doing this thing that you don't want to do over and over again until it yeah. becomes a habit. It's the same thing with yeah. gratitude. It's the same thing with meditation. The only difference is this habit is going to do some good for you and not going mm-hmm. to do some harm for you. You yeah. Intuition. Me, intuition is if it feels good, it's in alignment. If it doesn't feel good, it is not in alignment. That is intuition. Yeah. It's black and white <laughs> like that now for me. Like it, it, it's like that for me now. Um, if I'm in two my I realize before I'd be in two minds about things. And I'm talking in particular about dating and being with guys. I'd be two in two minds instead of just really feeling into myself and, and realizing that this person may not be good or this person may be good and let's go with that. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a slow burn sort of person. So I'm, I'm waiting it out, you know, well, I used to wait it out to see now I'm not that anymore. It's either black and white. So if my, I get the, the sense that this isn't um, what I want, or if, if I get the sense that something you're saying isn't sort of sitting right with me, because then I uh, I go into um, sort of annoying mode where my brain then starts to repeat the thing to me and it's just like it, it won't let up. That's when I know. Yeah, that's not for me. That's work. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation then shifted, so I'm gonna do a follow up on our conversation. <laughs> It was so nice having you. You're such a light. You're so appreciated. You're so brave um, to do what you want to do, to do what you're doing and speaking out and educating and breaking that stigma for other people who may be suffering in silence. Um, mm-hmm. I appreciate you. I'm um, for anyone here that who's been sent here to raise the vibration of the earth. You are my soul sister. And I may you just be blessed with all the joy and happiness that you seek, blessed with abundance, blessed with prosperity. May all pain and suffering disappear out of your life. And may you be surrounded by people who genuinely love you. Thank you. I'm literally making it rain on myself right now. All right, so long. Ha, 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 ha.